Ryan from Niche Facts here, and today I'm going to cover another online business idea that I really like. The idea is to create a site that specializes in lists or rankings. So I have a full blog post write up uh, on my site, it's nichefacts.com forward slash lists. So the idea is to generate content that um, basically takes the form of lists. So one website that I really like that does this really well on the entire site, all it is is lists, is ranker.com. So on ranker, basically every post is some type of list post. And here's an example of one. So this is a list of the very best movie franchises. So you see there's a lot going on here, but it's just it's a very engaging piece of content because people love lists. They love debating rankings. Uh, they're incredibly easy to digest. And what Ranker does that's really cool is that you can actually rank them yourself. And there's all sorts of different ways that they make this more engaging. It's like, you know, um, lists ordered by men, by women, by age. I'm not actually, exactly sure <laughs> how this works with the Star Wars franchises, but suffice it to say, they, there's a lot of different ways that they've created content here that engages their, their audience and actually encourages them to interact with the lists that they generate. I don't know why that, it's kind of glitching here. It's kind of weird. But anyway, so this is a really great example of what I'm talking about. It's it's uh, content that's organized into a list format, and you know they have an ad here. I actually have an ad blocker running, so uh, you're not actually seeing all the, the different ads that they're inserting between these these posts. So that's one example of of a site that I that I like. So I just want to cover exactly why I like this niche and then I'll dive into some of these other examples. And I'm going to also use Ahrefs to kind of analyze what's going on with these sites, what they rank for. So for instance, just taking a quick look at ranker.com, 11.8 million organic keywords, which is, you know, fantastic. So why do these list sites work? Well, first of all, readers really like them. Uh, list is very easy to digest. You know, if people are Googling things and they see uh, something like best movie franchises and list of top film series. You know, they're encouraged to click in because they know they're not going to be disappointed by what they get. They're very easy to to read and peruse. It organizes information in a very clear way, and people like that. They don't want to land in a site and hit a wall of text or a wall of deep analysis with no paragraph breaks. This is very easy to, to skim and get value from and be satisfied with. So like I say, it's, it's a very quick and concise tabulation of information. Another reason why I like this is for the publishers is that it's very easy to create content or list elements. You know, you don't need to hire a writer to generate 3,000 words, you know, on a, a medical condition. That's, that's compared to that, generating a hundred word blurb for The Lion King, that's very easy. It's very easy to do. And you could really outsource, uh, you could get very cheap content outsourced for these lists and people aren't going to be disappointed. They're not going to you know, see a Lion King write-up or a little blurb here, and if it, if it doesn't, uh, you know, read like Hemingway, it, they're not going to be dis so disappointed. They're not, they're not here to digest incredibly high-quality written content as much as enjoying the ranking, because um, that's really what takes precedence here. It's not as much, you know, writing amazing content and these blurbs, it's more just the, the ranking element that intrigues people. And that, uh, outsource content, that feeds into what I was just speaking about. It's very cheap to find writers to produce these blurbs. It's very easy to organize as opposed to trying to generate a long form content in something, some other niches where you really need to demonstrate incredible expertise and incredible authority, say in something like health. You know, it, 
it's much easier to find a writer in Eastern Europe who can just write, you know, fun little blurbs that don't take a lot of thought. And there's a lot of information online to um, to use to generate the content. You know, rewriting a movie, you know, summary about the James Bond franchise. That's incredibly easy to do, as opposed to more complex topics that require more expensive writers and deeper expertise. And maybe they need to be in the United States、uh, so that you have native English. So inherently, content is cheaper. And monetizing lists are also pretty. There's a lot of great opportunity. So it's very easy to insert ads within this content, and I'll actually disable ad blocker and see what what they're doing. So let's exclude and let's reload it. So for sure, they have you know display ads enabled here. Scrolling down, see what happens. So here's an advertisement that is taking a while to load this page. That may just be my my laptop, but it's, it's also there's a lot going on <laughs> on this page. It's kind of, in a way, it's kind of overloaded. You know, they, they have a lot of there's, there's a lot of different things going on here. But it, it really is a very viral type of site. You know, they. Like just scrolling down, it, it loads.、Uh, it basically loading more content dynamically. Okay, so the ads are not really showing up. But like, if you land on this site, you know it's categorized in such a way. Since I'm already on the the movie franchise, they're showing me related content here. So I mean, I think they do a, a really Good job of engaging people. I think the UI is a little messy sometimes. It's a, a kind of cluttered, but that's a very minor quibble because I, I really like this site a lot. So okay, I was there mainly. So there will be display ads within these list elements, and you can also do a lot of affiliate content within these lists. The list could be entirely affiliate content. It could be the ranking of the best. Keyboards, for instance, you know, something like that. It could be straight affiliate content, or some content doesn't really lend itself as much to affiliate. Like in this case, where it's it's movies. Sure, you could link to Amazon Prime and be an affiliate partner with something like that, or with HBO, and try to get people to sign up to watch one of these movies, which a little bit unlikely to do because people are coming here just to kind of digest the, the fun content. They're not so. Inclined to sign up for, you know, an HBO trial, but you never know. You, depending on the volume of traffic that you get, you will probably, you would probably get some, some signups and things like that. So, this is mainly informational content that would be monetized with display advertisements like AdSense or Media.net. Another great thing about these lists is that they're long-form content, which explains. What we saw before with the organic keywords that they rank for—it's just insane how much traffic you can get if you focus on long-form content. You know, it's been beaten to death in the SEO world, but really, getting content over 1,500 words, over 2,000 words, is really ideal for attracting a lot of long-tail、uh, keywords or traffic from long-tail keywords. And the good thing about lists is that it automatically bakes long-form content into the equation. So, say you are, as a site, targeting creating content that has at least two to five thousand words, and it can be difficult to achieve that word count in different niches. You know, you you know that you want to have long-form content, but a lot of times it can be difficult to try to stretch every piece of content to that length. But with something like lists, it's very easy because you could say, "Okay, I want. I've got 50 list elements. Make them 100 words each, and all of a sudden, you've got 5,000 words." And it's also very easy to structure when you outsource this content to writers. You just tell them, "This is sort of the format that I want for each of these list elements. I want a, a quick, fun little blurb that describes what the list element is, and pack in as much information as you can, and try to make it interesting. And you you kind of just 
you give them that, that advice, give them some feedback, and they're off to the races. They're producing 100 words on each of these uh, list elements. So that also feeds back into the outsourcing strategy. It's easy to create long form content. It's cheap to within this particular niche. The other great thing about this is that it can go viral. These people like people love these lists. They're great for posting on social media. And it's very easy to get shares and social signals, which are helpful in terms of the ranking algorithm. So that's that's really almost an underrated aspect of this here is that oftentimes people get very trapped in the SEO mindset and they just want to rank and go to organic traffic and they focus on niches where it's, you know, it's SEO or bust. But if you, if you choose a, a niche um, or you choose a list site, you decide to do a list type of site and you choose an interesting niche, you really have the potential to go to get a lot of social traffic organically because people would share stuff like this. People like to argue about it and debate it and it's very, it's very powerful. So that's another reason why I like this. And another, another part of this that's really cool is that it lends itself to imagery. As you can see, you know, there's a lot of images going on here. And images, I mean, obviously, if you land on a post and it's just wall, a wall of text, I mean, nobody wants to read that. No one wants to, to stare at, you know, an unbroken, uh, you know, thousand words of text. So this really breaks it up nicely. You've got little thumbnails here of the, of the different movies. And here's an, I'll just click into the best cartoons of all time. And maybe the ads will load this time. So, like I said before, this is, as much as I like this site, I still think this is like a little too much clutter. And I think there's a lot going on in terms of loading the page that per, might, it, I mean, at least for me, it hampers the user experience somewhat because landing on this page, it's still loading and loading and loading. But um, again, this is like a really cool, you could see that they have vote counts here. So people can actually vote and engage on this content. And again, they have the images and here's an ad, okay. Now we have some ads to look at. So after the third list item, we have, we have uh, an ad playing. And then we have, looks like another AdSense unit over here, which isn't exactly appearing. And then after the 14th, we've got another ad. And it looks like you have a watch now option. You've got another sort of widget ad, another ad, another ad. It's not low. Oh, there it is. There's the ad. So you can see it's really loaded with ads. <laughs> and you can see it, my, my computer is having trouble loading this because it's also like there's like a lazy load component of this. And then all the ads are kind of struggling to load at the same time as you scroll. So you don't want to scroll this, this page too quickly because it will crash. Oh, okay, it may not crash, but it's certainly going to lag. And I don't even want to know what it's like on mobile. So for this, there's even like a watch now. I, don't, and I have no idea what this does. I'm just trying, let me see what the, so if I click watch now on this, this could be an affiliate partnership that they have, whatever this cartoon is. And it has, it has some, some tr affiliate track or some sort of link tracking going on here. So look, this is a, an Amazon pro they are, it looks like an affiliate for Amazon Prime. So I'll just play along and say, okay, so yeah, basically land on a page and the pop-up is for starting an Amazon Prime trial. And that's, that's amazing. That's, that's a great, you know, that, that's how they, that's how they monetize. They have the ads, they have, they have affiliate partnerships like with Amazon. And you can imagine there's stuff like Hulu and Netflix. Some of them, 
I'm not sure which ones actually have affiliate programs, but as you can see, that's another powerful element of the list. You've created something entertaining, it's full of images, it's full of easy to digest, captivating content, and it's easy to monetize. So that really covers why I like these, these sites. I also want to dive into some other different examples. So another example is this one called Startups List. And what they do is curate startups by different locations. Very different than uh, Ranker, which is playing in more of the, uh, the viral content space. This is a very, you know, this website's really, like if you're in the startup world, this is a very useful space, or, you know, for venture capitalists, investors as well. So there's not much, too much to say. It really does a great job of, if you're interested in startups by location, this is really useful to you. You know, looking at, let's see, look at Los Angeles. And then if you click in, you, okay, so you get right, you, you're redirected right away to the website. I was thinking that maybe you would go to a, like an individual write-up of the company, but I don't see that. That's cool. You know, that it's a fun way to curate content. So it, it should kind of help you think about how would you want to combine this list idea with something. Like Ranker combines basically lists everything. It does every sort of list imaginable. You know, it'll list the best types of dogs. It'll list the best hairstyles. Something like this is much more focused. You have a list or it's almost, I mean, it, it is, yeah, I guess it, it's, it's a startup, it's a startup list by location. So you, you can sort of get a sense now that there are different ways you can combine the listing element. Okay, actually, let's take a look, because I, I bypassed Ranker before I already closed the window. So let's quickly take a look at some of their organic keywords. And this will really demonstrate like just how, how much content, like look at this one, ranking number two for good movies at 184,000 search for, uh, volume. That's pretty amazing. And this one, I don't even know what this word means. And it has almost half a million search volume. So let's quickly see what this is about. Tripophobia. What do you list about phobias is things we're scared of and why we're afraid of. These vomit inducing photos will trigger your trypophobia. Potentially debilitating condition. People are fearful of objects with small holes. <laughs> this is pretty amazing. Like I'm sure when they created this content, they had no idea that it would generate so much organic traffic that this would be their number one keyword. And honestly, it is a little bit disgusting, so I don't want to look at it. But that's another interesting thing. There's a lot of stuff in SEO where the topic is disgusting and people don't want to know about it. They don't want to write about it. Like who wants to write about content, you know, a, a phobia of things that have small holes. It's, it's really weird. But you know, that's their third position and it looks like they're getting, I mean, just massive amounts of traffic from that. Good movies, this is a great affiliate opportunity. And then I've seen this before where a lot of their content is actually like there's some, like Selena Gomez nude. That gets 162,000 searches a month and they're number one for that. So they curated a list of screen, I guess, screen grabs of, of her I'm not going to click into that right now because I don't know what I'm going to see. Scarlett Johansson nude, Kate Upton nude, Anna Kendrick nude. So they, they obviously, they're riding a, sort of an X-rated wave of organic traffic here. And I'm sure when they started the site, they had no idea that this is what was going to happen. Their organic traffic was going to, so much of it was going to come from these, you know, nude keyword related searches, which is very... <laughs> You know, it's it's pretty amusing. Best board game. That's a great affiliate opportunity. So you can see there's a lot, you know, they they get a lot of amazing keyword traffic. And if you look at their bank, uh, their backlinks, 
I'm sure they have some amazing links from, you know, look at this, domain rating 63 from Hollywood.com, Newser, Wikipedia, more Wikipedia, the expendablesmovie.net, more Wikipedia, there's a university link. So it's an incredibly powerful, it's an incredibly powerful content strategy. And you can see it really, it generates a lot of genuine interest in, our, in our organic backlinks as well as organic traffic. So let's plug the startup list site into Ahrefs, see what we find. Hmm, that's weird. That's probably not not correct because I think the way they've organized this, they've organized it as subdomains. So I may not be seeing the actual. So if I did Atlanta, let's see, hmm, that's not good either. But that actually makes sense in a way because there now that I look at the site, there isn't a ton of content. I was thinking that they would have more of a more of like write-ups of the companies but actually they're linking directly to them and so this uh these write-ups here are, are actually from the websites themselves so that is you know duplicate content um so i mean not everybody is trying to create a organic traffic, you know, AdSense arbitrage website. The, you know, this website is really valuable, but it's not necessarily going to be an amazing organic traffic opportunity if you're not going to write up long form reviews or profiles of these different companies. They probably get a ton of direct traffic because people just they, they, the, co the content is useful, but it's not really optimized to be discovered via organic search. Like there's a lot of social stuff going on here. Like he's got a little hello bar um, asking for a tweet or a follow. And there is AdSense here. So he probably gets good traffic. It's just not an organic play. So the next website that I think does lists really well. It's called the world's 50 best.com. And I think they're really famous for this particular restaurant ranking. So the world's 50 best restaurants, one through 50. And I'm, I'm not sure I'm not in the restaurant uh, niche or world too much, but I can imagine, you know, this is probably a very, this might be a pretty influential list in that in that world because it. Uh, I came across an organic search. I don't really really remember how, but it. Again, it's it's sort of an industry niche, which is another kind of take on things. Like instead of being a general list site for viral content, the way Ranker is, this is really specializing in a particular industry, which is uh, you know the restaurant world. Let's plug this into Ahrefs and see what we find. The 73,000 organic keywords, very high, you know, domain rating. Let's take a look at what they rank for. Best restaurants in the world, position two, 6,400 monthly search volume. So they're going to rank for a lot of restaurant keywords best restaurant in the world okay that's duplicated twice that sometimes happens in Ahrefs I'm not exactly sure why it's recognized as separate keywords it's the same URL top 50 restaurants best restaurant in the world again 50 best restaurants in the world so they, they get a lot of um, they're able to capture a lot of traffic from the individual restaurant names. So here's a, an example. They probably, in a way that the startup list didn't, this site produces more content around the actual list elements, which in this case are restaurants, which I think is a 
a, it's a great strategy. It's what I would what I would do. I wouldn't just direct link to the restaurant. I would have a little uh, write up, and this does it nice. Like I like how they break this down. So this is the restaurant. It's part of their list, but you deep click into a landing page here, and it has a very easy to read breakdown of what's going on. You know, what's the style of food? What's the best dish? What's the contact information? Quick summary to get a reservation so this is i like this a lot and it has images like a little slider here showing uh, images from the restaurant so that's another another strategy is that you can you can choose an industry and help to kind of disambiguate it with a list and they do awards uh asia's best female chef so there, there's there's a lot going on here they're not just a list uh ranking site but it it, that's a very powerful component of what they do. And I'm sure they get a lot of exposure within within their niche just by being an authority and by ranking different restaurants and choosing award winners. It can be a very powerful combination to kind of have be an authority site and even to leverage the power of awards. That's like that's a really powerful way to, to get backlinks and recognition and exposure for your website. Uh, let's see. So, okay, we did the restaurants. And then the next one I think is really cool is Wine Spectator. So Wine Spectator has its own website, but then they also have this, this sort of this subdomain, Top 100, which is their uh, 100 best, Top 100 of 2017. So this is their selection of the, the 100 best wines based on quality. And I like like this as opposed to Ranker. And like I said before, I love Ranker, it's awesome. But this is a much, for me, a much easier to digest ranking <laughs> than uh, what they were doing. But it also has different purposes. Like they're not trying to throw in, actually I shouldn't say that too soon, but I doubt they're trying to throw in a ton of AdSense ads in this page. It's, it's a different focus with a website like this. So I'm sure this is a very, this might be a pretty influential list in the world of wine. Um, and I'm not sure exactly what you can do with this, whether you, there's not really any links here to, to purchase. So there's a sort of selection ability here. I don't know that what that does. Oh, so you could actually toggle the, the list elements. Again, this is a really, you know, it's a nice, nice breakdown. Like I don't know anything about wine. So for me personally, this would be a, a useful thing to kind of consult. You know, I'd want to organize it. You could organize it by price and see, okay, this one looks to be the best value that you can get. So this is another way that you can use list elements to create a useful piece of content that probably a lot of people would would share let me see if they if the subdomain actually ranks for any keywords so this is this is pretty good like five let me see what, what words they actually are getting wine spectator top 100 so that's sort of a branded search best wine that's really great like they're number four for best wine Best wines with an S. The number three best wine in the world. The number three. And interestingly, it's not so much an affiliate play. Like there's no. You could actually. It looks like you can go like this. Click them, and then add to personal wine list. So that's sort of the way they're monetizing it. Is that. They, it's sort of a recurring revenue model. And honestly, it's not advertised that well here. You know, it, it took me a little bit of digging to figure out what these little check boxes were. Like, it would be helpful if they had more of a call to action here where it said, you know, or even links to, to add them to a cart or however they're choosing to do it. They're not linking out to like wine shops to third parties. They're, they're trying to keep people on their site and start a 30-day uh, trial with uh, the Wine Spectator subscription. 
So I guess you'll be getting get access to wine ratings, blah, 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 blah. So you get a membership. It's not clear exactly what am I getting the wine with that. Personal wine list, you'll be able to make shopping lists, organize your purchases. Still unclear whether they actually get shipped to me or not, but <laughs> um, you know, it's they have some very powerful keyword rankings. And I think it's a you know, this is just, I, I just hope that gives you some inspiration to kind of think about, you know, what do you know about, what do you care about that you can organize into lists that can get some, you know, viral traffic, some or, organic traffic, some social media traffic, and then how can you monetize that content? And that's really the equation here is taking this, this idea of a, of a list and marrying it with different styles of content that you can choose from and so like on my post uh, nichefacts.com forward slash lists you know I go through different ways I would think about choosing a list idea so one idea I had was combining ranker but doing it with careers so imagine like I say imagine a list based site produce content like the 20 worst jobs for 20 year olds the 30 weirdest professions, the 50 best career books for millennials, the 100 worst jobs for 2017. And there's lots of affiliate opportunities in, in, ed, in the uh, education space. So you could link to, I know, I don't want to say for certain, but I think like online universities like University of Phoenix, uh, they have affiliate programs. So say the 20 best jobs for 20 year olds and you list it out, it has 100 words for each listing you know, you could link to where people can start these degree programs. There's places like Udemy. They may not certify. Actually, I shouldn't say that. Maybe they do certify. I'm not sure. But they have an affiliate program I'm actually a part of. So if someone wants to learn about something or learn about a career or take a class in that to, you know, get hired for a job, that's a great affiliate opportunity for you. It's also great for display ads. You're going to be ranking for a lot of long tail keywords within the career niche, like how do I become an x-ray technician? Something like that. Maybe it has 3,000 searches a month and that's just one element of the list you create that maybe it's 5,000 words. So you, you get the idea that you can combine it with different things. Another one I like is the idea of combining a ranker style site with a geography. Like, um, so like I write here, I live in Brooklyn. So an idea like brooklynranked.com. So I would rank everything in Brooklyn. The 50 best pizzerias, 30 best Chinese restaurants. And what's good about that is that it gives you very specific domain authority instead of being like Ranker where they, they're all over the board. And yes, they've been successful, but it can be very overwhelming in the beginning if you don't have a, a, a tight content focus. So if you specialize in Brooklyn, you know, you and review all sorts of things, you know, 50 best mechanics, 75 best plastic surgeons, stuff like that is really powerful. You can do lead generation for doctors. You can call them up and do ad sales and say, hey, you know, we'll add you to this list as a sponsored uh, submission, or you could do link tracking to see how much traffic you sent to their website and just get paid on that. There's different ways you can kind of figure it out, but you can become a very powerful local area resource if you just do it by geography. A third idea, which I, I covered a little bit just before, was about combining something like Ranker with an industry. So the example I have here is ranking the best lawyers by type in a given geography, or maybe even just nationwide. Best law firms, you specialize in law, and all of a sudden you're doing the 100 or the 200 best um, you know, DUI lawyers in America. That could be incredibly powerful. And it, as something like that, say 200 words and you're doing 100, 100 words per blurb or 500, I mean, it could turn to some you know, massive post, tens of thousands of words, it becomes incredibly powerful. So if you, if you come to the site, uh, nichefacts.com forward slash lists, I actually, did some keyword keyword research already 
Um, this may not be the best way to kind of find the list you want to do because it's not like people are looking for list of best DUI lawyers, but they they would be finding you organically by typing in you know DUI lawyer in Nevada or something like that, and that would just be part of your list. But here's like a breakdown of some uh, types of lists people are looking for: list of movies, list of countries, list of Disney movies, list of emotions of vegetables. So there's a lot of different list things that get organic traffic. And then I also included my hobby keyword research. And this took me a while to generate, but it's like, a, you know, I, I basically compiled all the hobbies I could find on the internet into like one mega list and used Longtail Pro to generate the keyword competitiveness scores. So you can get a very easy overview of all these different hobbies that are out there. The number one is actually Domino's, which is capturing obviously some of the pizza traffic. So that is not exactly a great example, but it's also a, part, a portion of the search does refer to the game of Domino's. Sudoku, cricket, college football, anime, bodybuilding. So there's, you basically can take this list and marry it with the ranker idea where you're in something like bodybuilding and you're doing a list in the bodybuilding niche and i'm sure you could right away you're thinking like of a million ways like the 50 best biceps of all time the 20 best chest presses or you know bench presses of all time the 50 worst gym fails that ever happened and you can see it, it's a recipe for organic traffic and it's a recipe for social traffic something like bodybuilding like there's tons of these bodybuilders that get decent search volume just by their names that um, i'm sure they don't get there isn't a lot of coverage of them on the internet uh, in terms of like quality content written content at least so there's a lot of stuff you can do just capturing traffic from their names and even further say like instagram where there's all these you know bodybuilders on there you can reach out to them and say, say something like you do a list of 100 best Instagram bodybuilders. Like I just came up with that at the top of my head. And you could reach out to every single Instagram bodybuilder and say, hey, you made the list. And you know what they're going to do? Maybe 15% of them, 10% of them give you some sort of recognition or shout out from their Instagram profile. Like you can get so much traffic to something like that, so much recognition. It could be really powerful. So that's actually, I think I'm actually convincing myself to do it. But <laughs> anyway, I go into a little bit more detail on the post. You know, I have a lot of tactics in here. I cover content harvesting. Uh, just basically how to take your content and redistribute it across different platforms. That's, so that's the idea with this, this uh, list site. Um, I think it's a fun way to create a lot of interesting content that's organized in a way that users like. It's also an easy way to get started creating cheap content in a very organized fashion. And a lot of my own sites, they, they are just list sites. You know, a lot of the review articles, it's the five best, the top five. So when people see that in the search engines and they, they've Googled something, they trust clicking into it because they know they're just getting a list and they don't have to stress out, you know, reading a lot of information. They get a clear ranking of content and that is very attractive to people. People really like it. So just let me know what you think. I'd really be indebted if you subscribed or commented. I reply to everything. And just let me know what you think of this niche business idea. Okay, thanks.